This video is will be focusing again on uh, central finance target system settings and we have already covered uh, previous uh, configurations in video uh, till video 1 to 10. Uh, so I would recommend you know when you start uh, viewing the video view it in the series uh, so that you can get this view. Uh, we have uh, different videos in, in a sequential uh, manner uh, till video 10 we have covered initial load preparation for management accounting. And today in this video, video number 11, we will cover initial load execution uh, for financial accounting. So first activity is define initial load group. So here what we do is in the what, uh, what company codes on the source system are in scope, we list those down. And what source systems are in a scope per, com per uh, company code, we list them down. So we can have like four, four source systems and every source system might have four company codes. So in total, we have 16 company codes. So we group those, uh, we create an initial load group. It can be by company code. It can be mul group multiple company codes of one system into same. It depends again on the volume of the data those system, those company codes carry, but never group uh, two company codes of uh, two different systems into one initial load group. So here you create, you have uh, on the first step, you have, uh, you create a group ID. For example, you say, okay, A, B, C, D and group source system is uh, AP1 and then under that if you then you select that group and then you cl click on the left hand side assign company codes and then you assign the logical system under the if you see load group IDs on the top and under that you have logical source system and you have the source company code so in this way under one group ID you can assign same logical system and you can assign for example two company codes three company codes 50 company code it depends again you know and this is a very subjective decision. You need to understand what is the volume of the source system uh, data per company code, uh, what is the controlling area combinations on the source systems, all those things have to be considered. Now the next is execute initial load for initial load group. So this is the main execution exercise. This is not a configuration exercise. This has to be executed directly in the production system. Of course, during the testing, you execute in the test system. And it start with point number one, which says start data extraction. So when you start this, you select the initial load group. So for, we just created in the previous step, the initial load group. In this step, we put the initial load group. Number of bad jobs, you need to check it from your basis team. Again, it depends on the system size, on the source system, on the target system, how much uh, resources are available. You put those uh, based on that, you put the number here, maybe 10, maybe 50, maybe 100. And then the first step is this is this goes sequential start data extraction. So this takes long time. So basically in this step, uh, what system does is system will execute the jobs and it extract the data from the source system tables, which is like uh, BSEG or BKPF. And it puts it into the uh, temporary table, which is CFIN ACC ID. And once that extraction is complete, uh, you of course in the next step you can monitor those you can see monitor initial load execution on the top uh, left corner uh, we have every every execution step has a monitor step so first is data extraction and then you can do mapping simulation you can see okay how your mappings are looking like it will simulate all your mapping with source system and the target system for that particular load group and then you do the posting simulation in this step uh, it will again take some time depending on the volume uh, it will simulate the data for posting it will not post anything but it will show you the pro potential errors which are going to come uh, like mapping errors configuration mismatch errors or any other data issues uh, which can be uh, an error in the real posting and once uh, you complete the simulation you resolve the so ideal step is you complete the simulation and you uh, posting simulation of course data extraction you have to ensure there is no error then you clear your mapping simulation then you clear your data, uh, posting simulation and ensure that there is no error in posting simulation execute the post before you execute all the errors should be resolved and at the last is you start posting when you start posting system will actually post the data from your source system it pulls it out and it posts it into the central finance system and you will see the postings in table ac docker so here uh, you start posting and of course, you know, it goes into the multiple iterations where you resolve all the errors and then uh, you keep on monitoring that. So here we do start posting. So these are the sequential step which go in sequence. 
and then the next step we have monitoring so exactly same pre as the previous one so per initial load group you do monitor data extraction you do monitor of simulation mappings you do monitor of posting simulation and then you monitor posting so monitor posting is very important because here you get the real view of the errors uh, what has been in error and then here you resolve the error and you rerun the load so whenever you get errors in posting uh, monitor posting and you, you resolve the errors and you re-execute, what system does is, if there are 1000 documents on the source system and system has posted 800, those are already posted and now for 200, it will check errors, you resolve those errors and it will execute again the posting for those 200. It will try, now in 200, for example, 50 documents are good, it will post. So now you left with 150. You resolve more errors, you execute again. So it goes on and on until all your errors are resolved and 100% documents are posted. So that's a, it takes some time to complete this process. It's a little bit lengthy process, but yes, uh, that's how the initial load works. So that's a step. You define initial load group. You execute initial load in a sequential manner, uh, data extractions, mapping simulation, posting simulation, and posting per initial load group, and then you complete the posting. And this results in everything in being posted. Now the next step is for CO postings, which you have done in the previous uh, scene in the previous video, your system gives you a comparison report, basically logical system, company code, and GL account. Is it optional? Nothing, uh, nothing very mandatory step that you need to execute it. Now the next is delete initial load data. In this step, uh, you this is optional step. So this basically when you uh, you are in test phase or you did you see major issues in your data posting and you want to execute uh, re-execute something, of course you have to clean the data. So this step, what you do is uh, you initial load data. You have two steps. One is you have to delete in the post in the target system because the postings are already done in AC Docker. You have to clean the table uh, for particular company code or load group, and then. In the next step, you basically delete the, sta the, tem the staging tables or the trigger tables in the source system. So in this step, what you do is, this purpose of this report is to delete the entries in the database tables, which are inserted during extraction, posting, and simulation. So it, uh, in, it deletes everything. Uh, when I say everything, it means any triggers, any posting in done in the central finance system. And that's an optional step. You don't need to execute this. You just have to ensure that uh, if everything is good, you don't need to execute del any deletion. But we have seen in test systems, of course, you know, there are multiple iterations of deletions as well in the real world. And in the next part is uh, initial load data deletion in source system. Here, what it does is it resets the initial load that has been created in the source system. And you can also delete the ongoing application if you have already triggered. It deletes the migration log entries, migration log table specific transfer tables and transfer table that contain the application data created in the source system. So anything being done created by in the uh, any triggers being created by initial load in the source system. And if you have unfortunately, if you have switched on the replication and then you realize that something is tremendously wrong, then it also delete the transfer tables uh, which uh, with the application data which has been uh, sitting in the transfer table in terms of real time replication. So here what you do, you select the source system, you select the company code and you check the clear ongoing transfer tables and you execute it. It can also be, this can be done in two ways. One is if you do in target system, it will go through RFC connections and it will delete the data in the source system. Another is there is you can directly delete in the source system. So there are, uh, there are uh, steps you can directly delete in the source system. And this have, I have uh, discussed this in detail in one of my another video, if you see it or delete initial load data in uh, uh, in central finance and there is a video for that. So this way you can delete the data in your uh, source system. Of course, you need the necessary authorization because source system might be productive system. So you may not have a delete authorization uh, to run and run those programs. But yes, you need to get those authorizations and then you can execute. So this is the steps for uh, particular company codes. Uh, if you want to execute the initial load, you define load groups, you execute, you monitor, and then you do comparison. Deletion is always uh, need based. You can you just just want don't want to delete everything, but if you see something very uh, strange or wrong, then of course you need to execute this step. So I would say deletion is uh, optional step, 
and you have if you need to do deletion you need to execute in two systems there is there has to be a deletion in the source system and there has to be a deletion in the target system so with this video we complete the initial load part and in the next video we will be talking about central payment i will talk about overview what central payment is at a high level of course it has been discussed in another videos in theory and then we will talk about activation and what are the necessary steps and what are the repercussions of activation of central payment so this we will be talking about in the next video uh, that will be video number 12 so this is the high level summary of all cfin videos uh, i would recommend to go through sequence especially the configuration videos uh, follow the sequence of videos i have marked those videos by numbers to ensure you don't miss anything you don't miss any key key uh, component of the configuration because configuration is dependent on one after the other that's why i followed a sequence and do not forget to like subscribe and share the channel uh, happy to have your questions in youtube uh, comment section thank you